Uh, this is Average Done here coming at you with another video of what I have read this week. Now, before I get into it, I just want to let you all know that I am going on vacation next week, or uh, next Friday. And I'm not coming back for about three weeks. So I'll be going from July 23rd to August 9th. So there may not be any videos on, on this channel, but I'll keep you all updated, especially through my social medias. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at tripl 3 xxxmayhem um, My Twitter at RealAverageDawn and my Facebook at OfficialAverageDawn I'll remind you all at the end Not only that, but they'll all be in the description just in case you can't spell or can't understand me Alright all right. So let's get into what have I read over this week have I read anything good? Who knows? Well, I know, but that's besides the point. And yeah, my script, my laptop is right here. As you can probably see the blueness of my glasses is reflecting. But in any case, let's get on with the show. So I've read Batman number 79, uh, volume 3, 2019, by DC. So it's not as the City of Bane. I've also read uh, Alpha Flight, number 57, volume 1. This was made in 1998. This was made by Marple. Um, Alright, I've also read uh, Catwoman, number 14, volume 5. This was made in 2019. This was also made by uh, DC. Next, I got Iron Man, Iron Man the Annual number 12. Iron Man the Annual number 12. This is made in 1991 by Marvel. All right, next up, we got Spider Man. Yes, yeah, Spider Man. This is number 14, volume 1. So this will be made in also 1991 by Marvel. Spider Man. Alright. And next up, we have Deceased. Deceased. Uh, number 6, Volume 1. That's made in 2019 by DC. If that wasn't obvious, Deceased. DC. Alright. And next we kind of. We have two copies. Of. Uh, Deceased Unkillables. Uh, two copies right here. Uh, this is. In number two. Volume one. Main 2020. By DC, yeah. I'm not going to do that again. That was scary even for me. <laughs> All right. Sorry. There you go. Next up, we have Star Trek Unlimited. This is number six, volume one. And this is made by Marvel. Up. We have the Punisher Armory, number two, volume one, 1991. This one was made by Marvel as well. And last but not least, we have Doomsday Clock. Doomsday Clock. This is number 11. Volume 1, made in 2019, by DC Comics. Alright. So, let's get into it. Uh, so, Batman, number 79. That's our first stop, right here. We got Batman, 
Catwoman, they're on vacation. They finally decided to go out on a break. Uh, they took what memories they got they met on the streets outside of costumes. After a while, they do decide to go back to Gotham. It's been alright, peaceful, but that's only due to like the villains running everything and saving everyone that does not agree with them. So they, they gotta come back. Batman and Catwoman, they easily take care of things. They easily do. They quickly too, they got the fam that this villain named Magpie was uh, coming in to sell the Bane. Um, Catwoman reminisces about the corner of Diamond, who she tried to steal four times, and she always got caught by Batman four times. No, it's a day well spent cleaning up crime. <laughs> what else can it be? No. What sets for them tomorrow? Alright. That's the end of that comic. Now... What happens in Alpha Flight number 57? Well, there's a group of superheroes called Alpha Flight. They're looking for this pair of girls named Laura and Kara. They're on a plane called Live World, a world where they can't hurt anyone and they can't be hurt by them. Alpha Flight finds them. The plane is alive. Very alive and very, very hostile. And these crystals, they start forming and growing and trapping their shit. And they bleed. That's how they know they're alive, because they bleed. But uh, one, one person named Goblin vibrates the same frequency as the crystals and tells them to stop growing. And they do so. They do so, sir. Easy. But Laura is taking by a mysterious lady. She is. Who is the mysterious lady? Don't know. Gotta read on. Alrighty. So this next one. Oh, well. Thought I had this loaded up. Apparently I did not, so... But, it's okay. No, I did But, you know what? That is okay. That is okay. Okay, I got it written down here. Alright. Now they're all caught up. Sorry for that. 30 second delay or whatever. Now we got Catwoman here. Catwoman. That's a good comic. Now yeah, it's a year of the villain. Uh, but Catwoman is drowning. And she went to this person called Karen Rain. And her husband was Aberdeen. They held detailed accounts of everything in Gotham. They died two weeks ago of a broken. Well, he died two weeks ago of a broken heart because he thought that uh, Karen was dead. Now, uh, they originally had hired Catwoman, you know, to break into the accounts of a uh, Wayne Tech. Now there are. Uh, Accounts and like steal everything and steal all, all the money and have it for them yeah. uh, well, well, this is also a dream that met me in seven because of course he wants to be with a, a Catwoman and it's predicted by a Constantine actually that a uh, that a cat woman is going to die in his arms on the rooftop of the finger tower. So, in Batman, it's just like, nah, nah, it's not gonna happen, I'm gonna protect her. Well, 
he picks her up in the Batmobile and while they're out cruising and all that stuff. He gets shot by a sniper and he dies in his arms on top of the finger tower. Now Constantine's just like, No, I told you so. No, I told you so. And he's just like, Why are you like this? Why is your power this? And he could have been one of the greats, he could have been part of the Justice League. And then Constantine's like, Chill, chill, you know, this is not real. Not real. This is part of the fear gas. Turns out that Batman has been under the control of Scarecrow this entire time. So, that's the end of that comic. And next, we have the Iron Man annual. It was made in 1991. Now, you know, Iron Man Falls, and this uh, comic is picked up by Jim, by Jim Rudy. I almost said James. Oh, I think it's his father. Uh, Rudy is taking Iron Man to the hospital. But Tony Stark is urgently needed at Stark Tower. And there's this old lady that's refusing to leave until Tony speaks to her. And the old lady is Kala, a former queen of the netherworld. And yeah, she wants to rule netherworld again, but her rule has been taken by other people. By like a mole man. So she enlists Tony Stark to help her. And why would Tony help her? Well, I don't know, he's just a good guy. So they, they go and they help her, and you know, the, uh, there's this group called the Outsiders who are charged with protecting her. She doesn't want her people to, she wants to rule. So, they fight, and the Outsiders get her. And, you know, and then Iron Man just like swoops in and box her from all the bullets from other people who are opposing as she does this. And, and Kara just starts randomly rapidly aging again. That's the end of that story. This is an annual, so it contains other stories. Like it contains a story where uh, uh, Quasimodo uh, versus uh, Iron Man, which is Pretty yeah, alright. Well, Quasimodo is a, like a bee villain or whatever, and he's just like, an Iron Man fix me, I'm not fixed, so he, you know, at first they fight, and it's just like, well, I'm just gonna put you in this virtual reality thing. So that ends that story. And the next story, it's like Jim Rudy's doing some delivery for Tony Stark. Mm. The Trapster comes with another B villain. But it's not actually the Trapster, it's someone dressed as the, trap, as the Trapster. Now he blows up the car. Uh, Iron Man, of course, comes out to help. He taps Iron Man glue and shoots him with a mini heat seeking missile. Uh, trapster is just like, oh, you know what? This job's already taken care of. So he goes back to the wherever, and his boss is just like, mm, No, and your job's not finished until you kill Jim Rudy. So he goes back, and of course, Iron Man defeats him, and then hits a ride to DC. And the last story. And then the last story is, you know. Uh, Scott Lang or Ant Man. Uh, as his team is fixing like a, a pool or whatever, and a Mark and Margaret's house, and uh, they find they hear strange noises, so they go to investigate. And it turns out they're holding a skull in a cell at the 
uh, in, in the pool. Her name is Veronica. She's a highly mutated member of the family. It's also called a dragonfly. Uh, she tries to drown her at first, but then Orcs just, just keeps her in the prison. Uh, she was in a fake uh, mountain wall uh, to hide her. But of course, Sandman gets her out. They're all safe. You know, happily ever after. Kumbaya. And that's the end of that. The whole shebang. <laughs> Alright. And next up, we have Spider Man number 14. I right, know this is Spider Man, you know, in New York. He's in Brooklyn. And he goes to the abandoned subway tunnels just looking for this missing person. Yeah, because there's this huge uh, homeless group on the painted subway tunnels. Homeless group divided between good and bad. And it turns out that Morbius is actually their leader. Morbius the living Morbius the living vampire. Now he he needs blood to survive. He needs blood so he has them separate out the good and the bad, and he only eats as the bad people. But uh, Spider-Man tells him that homeless people are not the best judges of character. And so then they fight and all that stuff. I don't think it's resolved this issue, but it, it's a good issue. It is a good issue. Next up, we have Deceased. Deceased. And number six. And uh, Superman, or Clark Kent. You know, the tallest residential building in the world. Destroyed. It's just a Wonder Woman, this Batman, Cyborg, Green Arrow, Green Lantern. Uh, it's also Alfred, um, Batman has Kryptonite, of course. Uh, all these people are meaning that the Fortress Salt dude. Uh, and when I say Batman, I mean Damian Wayne. And they got Arc Sea from Earth to Mars. And they got two Arcs. They have one in Gotham and one in Demiscuria. That's where, uh, Wonder Woman is, I think. Or Wonder Woman is from, I should say. They both hold 7 million people. Now, they got combined kryptonite with something to, to kill Superman or at least su suppress him. They combined kryptonite with the Sword of Athena. And it turns out the villains and heroes are working together. Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy stay. Uh, there's Mira, there's Kraken controlled by Aquaman who is controlled himself. Turns out this is virus caused by the anti-life equation. And he kind of heals like Superman and Aquaman. So, uh, so Superman's just going all, all haywire and everything. And only one person can see this is his son, Sean. So, of course, he tries to do that. He sacrifices himself because Superman goes after the Yarks while they are escaping. And, let's see. Uh, they're going to find an Earth Dew, and of course, it's, it's discovered that Cyborg is a mother box. That's cool. Alright. 
Next up, we got Star Trek. This thing uh, is so going well. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry. I don't know why I'm saying I'm sorry all the time. I'm, I'm just used to it. I'm going to say that a hundred million times, probably. But right now, back to the video of Star Trek Unlimited number six. Now, this follows uh, Jean Luc Picard and uh, the Generations team. Yeah, he's even a personal blog, Stargate 50298.4. Yeah, they're going into uh, they're near a Bajorn wormhole, wormhole in Deep Space Nine. There we get some gem harder Hadio warships. Now, of course, the what, what, um, the famous intro, you know, space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. It's a five-year mission to explore strange new worlds and seek new life, new civilizations, to boldly go where no one has gone before. And you got the Jim Hadir strategist, uh, uh, secret strategist. And yeah, they got the, uh, they're basically just like shadows. They're basically just like shadows. I'm looking at this too. Um, yeah, basically what happens is, and they all get portrayed that one of the guys is one of the Jim Hadiers. And he, he just starts to betray all of them. And John Luke Picard sees this, of course. And, and that ends ultimate number six. And I apologize, but Star Trek has a lot of stuff that I do not know about or I cannot pronounce. So half of the comic goes it's like a what? Yeah, you know, it's got a lot of lore and stuff like that. But besides that we have this is the unkillables. Killables. So Put it right here. Right. So we got the commissioner Jim Gordon. You know, he is trapped. Um, you know, you got Lewis Lane on the radio. You know, got the two arcs that we were talking about. Um, but we have a group of villains that are trapped on an island, led by Vandal Van Savage. Uh, but they teleport to a commissioner, Tim Cord, who was actually held up in, in, in an orphanage. So he held up with a lot of kids. You know, he's, he's, you know, and he, you've got a, a villain that's like, you got Snart, Lennon Snart, Captain Cold, uh, you have Slade Wilson, who's Deathstroke, and you have Rose, who is his uh, daughter. Uh, you know, and you also have on Commissioner Gordon's side, you have Commissioner Gordon, and you have Nightwing. Uh, so it turns out that Wonder Woman is infected. Uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that a cheetah is in, in here. But you got a. Uh, the orphanage that they're at isn't Bloodhaven. It's in Bloodhaven. And they have this room 
and they have like thousands of five children in because of course no one wants to kill any children so but they're just like opening up we we have to kill them they're trapping the other infected so they do that unfortunately and they have to kill all of them which includes uh, Billy Bats and of Shazam fame. So unfortunately they do that and then they start training up the children to be soldiers. This is an unlikely event. This is an apocalyptic event. You got Superman all virused out. Then you got Wonder Woman who's all virused out. Now they're the two most powerful people on the earth. So and they can find they can find you. Their their tracking is really good. So they train them up to at least defend themselves. Yeah, but uh, then you got Bane infected, who is also there with them. Bane and Sheeta are also there with them. Uh, but Bane infected, he's a instant problem. Because not only is he strong, but he's right there with everyone. So with him infected, he just boulders on through everything. And we don't know what they're going to do. Are they going to defend themselves? Who knows? Alright. Alright, we got the Punisher Armory. Which is basically about... The guns the Punisher uses, not, not just the guns, but the kind of weapons he uses and the cars he uses. I mean, it's, it's for okay. Like, basically, uh, he uses a 800, he uses a, a like, German Army MG-42. Quite a portable uh, gun for the Amelia Squad automatic weapon, 850 rounds per minute, and it's accurate up to a thousand yards. Oh, that's the I'm not really in the guns, but it goes in the uh, deep descriptions about each of his weapons and some of his cars and stuff, like. All, all throughout it's it's good and detailed if you want to get into that I unfortunately I didn't you know I'm, I'm not a gun person myself so if you find this stuff interesting oh it's just you pick this one up alright and the last but not least, we have the Doomsday Clock. Now what to do? Alright, so in this storyline, you don't have a Superman. It's a game war between Joker and two others. And somehow, Adrian's fight is responsible. I don't, uh, War Rorschach is also taken over somehow. And this guy, Ozzy Mandius, was floating around. This guy named Ozzy Mandius wants, wants to protect the Earth, wants to protect the Earth. But he says for the Earth to get protected. Stuff so has to fall at the rock bottom. So he's causing all these problems and stuff. And he's looking for this one man named uh, Dr. Manhattan. Who is, is working somewhere. I went to see also. Um, but yeah, eventually he does run, run into him. Yeah. But, and now before, not before this girl named Saturn Girl, who can see the future. But uh, all of a sudden, she can't see the future when, uh, I 
Ozymandias and uh, Dr. Manhattan are meeting up. So you can no longer see the future. So she starts to disappear. So, uh, she starts to disappear. <laughs> well, yeah, they, they meet up and Superman, who is who was ill, was just taking a break. He was like in a coma or something because of some uh, kryptonite. He finally comes through and he meets up with uh, Dr. Manhattan as well. So, but they don't solve the apocalypse as his shoe. Alrighty. Well, yeah, that is the 10 comics that I've read this past week. Uh, if you have read anything, have read anything new, you can post in the comments. You can post in the comments if you liked it. Post in the comments if you liked anything. I uh, just remember I'm going on vacation um, next Friday. So we from July 23rd to August 9th. So I will not be on YouTube between those dates. Or, well, I'll probably be on YouTube, but I won't be around so I won't post any new videos like what I've read and what I've seen and I might might post a thing on a Thursday probably on a uh, probably on a, one, one of the graphic novels that I have uh, might do that but I don't know but still regardless I'll be posting on a Instagram, you can find me at T R I P L 333. Don't. You can find me on Instagram at T R I P L 3 X X X Mayhem. You can find me on Twitter at Real Average John. You can find me on Facebook at Official Average John as well. That stuff is where I'll be posting when I'm on vacation. Um, like I said, uh, if you've read anything new, if you have any new updates on what you like or whatever, post them in the comments down below. Uh, tomorrow I plan to have a video out on what I watched, which what I've watched is Loki. I, I love uh, Marvel. I should have done this for all the other uh, series that came out, like Falcon and Winter Soldier and WandaVision. I might still do those. Who knows? But I will do that for uh, for Loki. So tomorrow, Loki. Alright. Alright. Well, I'll see you guys tomorrow.